Hello everyone, this is Pepper Crochets. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm finally doing the tutorial for my anniversary brunch outfit that I had in the blocking video. I'm going to insert a clip now. This top is the top that I wore to my anniversary brunch and it took me such a long time to create the tutorial because the original top was actually a mistake and I kind of just went with it so I had to retrace all my steps and figure out what I did for the original. But here we are. I've had a lot of people requesting this top in my previous video as well as on my TikTok so I'm really excited and happy that I get to share this tutorial with you all. As always, this top is also going to be based on your measurements so you can customize it to your liking. If you decide to try this tutorial out, please let me know in the comment section below and support my channel by liking, commenting, and subscribing. I have many more tutorials on the way. Let's get started. Before we get started with crocheting, we're going to need a few measurements first. So go ahead and grab a tape measure, a piece of paper, and a pen, and you can also sketch this out with me just so that it's a little bit easier. The first measurement that we're going to be taking is our bust measurement. So you're going to take the tape measure and put it over the widest part of your chest, over your nipples, and that will be your bust measurement, and you want to write that down. Now we need to figure out the measurements for our bust panel, which is this image on the left here. We're going to be making two panels. So you're going to need a measurement um, for the front portion. So that's going to be from under your armpit on the side of your body, closest to your chest, that widest part that you just took. You're going to put the tape measure over your nipple and record how long it is from the point under your armpit to the center of your chest. So directly under your armpit on the lateral side of your body right there over your chest over the nipple to the center of your chest and that will be the measurement for the bust panel for me that was nine inches now we're going to do a little bit of math so since we need two of these panels for the front portion of the top we're going to multiply that number that we just got by two so for me that was nine nine times two is 18 and then you're going to subtract that from the first measurement you took or the bust circumference measurement. So that's 30 minus 18 for me, which leaves me with about 12 inches. This number will tell you how long you need your back panel to be. The back panel is just a rectangle. So I know that the back panel needs to be about 12 inches long so that everything fits nicely on the body. Now when we start crocheting, you're going to notice that I do decreases and increases between the straps. This is to make space for the armpit area and also determine the shape of the back portion. So what I did was I divided the length of the back panel by 2, which was 6 inches, because I wanted the shape to be a V shape. So I want the length of the ends of these triangular portions on the bust panel to be 6 inches. So then when I sew everything together, it'll create a nice V shape. So you want it to be equal on both sides. However, for the first top that I did, I'm going to insert a clip. I did more of a U shape. I'll show a clip right now. You see it's more of a U shape rather than a V shape. So to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to divide the length by two and then subtract, let's say, one or two inches or however many inches you want from both panels. So you can make it, for me, let's say, four and a half or five inches rather than exactly six inches, which will create a V-shape. I hope that makes sense. To get the height of the back panel, we're going to have to start crocheting the bust panel first. So it's going to be the same height as the bust panel before we start decreasing on both sides to make that triangular shape for the armpit area. So for me, remember I wanted a V shape, I wanted the length to be 6 inches, so once I reached 6 inches across, which I'll reiterate again when we get to that portion, I took the measurement of the height and that was 6 inches and that will be the height of the back panel. Again, I'll mention this when we get to that portion. To begin, you can grab any size hook and yarn. I'm using a DK weight 3 yarn and a 3.5mm hook. 
we're going to start with the bust panel. I'm going to make half double crochet foundation stitches. So you're going to make a slip knot, put it on your hook, and chain up three. Now we're going to yarn over, put our hook back into the very first chain we made, making sure to grab the front and the back loop, and then you're going to pull up a loop. Now we have three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through the top loop, that's going to be the foundation stitch always, and then yarn over and pull through the three loops on your hook for a half double crochet. And you're always working into this V shape in the back here closest to the yarn. Let's make another foundation half double crochet stitch, yarn over, put your hook in to both the front and the back loop, pull up a loop, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the top loop, that's the foundation stitch, and then yarn over and pull through three loops on your hook for a half double crochet. This just makes the process easier instead of having to do a chain and then do a second row with the half double crochet, it just consolidates the process. And you're going to keep making foundation half double crochet stitches until it's the length of the second measurement we took from under our armpit to the center of our chest. So here I finished, I have 9 inches. Now we're going to start our second row, so you're going to chain up 2, turn your work. The second row is just going to be half double crochet stitches into every single stitch, including that very first stitch. And then you're just going to make half double crochets into every single stitch until you reach the end of the row. We're not going to be putting a half double crochet into the chain, we're just going to stop at that very last stitch. For the next row, we're doing the same thing, chain up two, half double crochet stitch into every single stitch, including the very very first stitch, and not placing a half double crochet into the chain, just into the very last stitch. You want to keep going until the length is about an inch from under your bust up until it reaches your nipple line. For me that was about 3 inches. Now we're going to be working on creating this incline or slope area for the v-neck part of the top. So we're only going to be decreasing on one side as you can see here. And then once it reaches the length that we wanted for the triangular portion or 6 inches, then we're going to start decreasing on both sides. To begin the decreases for the v-neck portion, we're going to half double crochet until we reach the last two stitches of our row. Here are the last two stitches, and we're going to prepare for half double crochet, yarn over, put our hook into the stitch, and pull up a loop. But instead of finishing the half double crochet, we're going to go into the very last stitch now, and also pull up a loop. Now we have four loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on our hook, to finish the decrease. So basically half double crocheting two stitches together. To begin the next row, we're going to chain up two, and we're also going to do a decrease at the beginning of the row. Remember before we were putting a half double crochet into every single stitch, including this very first stitch? Well now we're going to ignore that very first stitch and half double crochet into the very next stitch. And that will decrease at the beginning of the row and create a more prominent incline or slope for the v-neck portion. You're only going to be decreasing on one side until it reaches the length that you desire, so for me 6 inches. So here I am just showing you one more time, this is the last two stitches of the row, and I'm half double crocheting the last two stitches together, and then beginning the next row by chaining 2, turning my work, and decreasing at the beginning by skipping that very first stitch and half double crocheting directly into that very next stitch. You're going to repeat this until it reaches the top length that you wanted for the triangular portion. Remember for me that was 6 inches and you're also going to take note of the height of this panel because it's going to be the same height as the back panel. So that was 6 inches and I made sure to write that down. You're going to keep decreasing both sides until you reach your desired width for these straps. You want to take note of how many rows or how tall that portion is because we have to repeat this for the other panel as well. So again, we're decreasing both sides. So I'm starting the row with the decrease, which means I'm skipping the very first stitch, half double crocheting into the very next stitch, and then we're decreasing again at the end by half double crocheting the two stitches together like we did for the decreases for the bust. 
here I'm just showing you guys one last time how to do the decrease. So you're going to half double crochet these two last stitches together. Chain two, turn your work, and then half double crochet into the very second stitch. You're skipping the very first stitch and that will be a decrease. And you're gonna do this until you reach the desired strap width. I did this for about seven rows until the top was around two inches in length. Now I'm going to chain up two, turn my work, and I'm doing one last decrease in the beginning here. And I'm half double crocheting until the end of the row. Notice that I'm not doing a decrease at the end here. I'm just doing a regular half double crochet. From here, you're just gonna keep doing half double crochet rows with no decreases until you reach your desired strap length. For me, that was about 10 inches long. Now, once our strap is finished, we're going to create the other triangular section that's going to be the opposite of the one that we just made. So since we did decreases, now we're going to be doing increases. You're going to chain two, turn your work, and for an increase, you're going back into that very, very first stitch and you're doing a half double crochet. And then into the very same stitch, you're placing one more half double crochet. So instead of decreasing and doing two stitches together or skipping a stitch, we're adding two half double crochets into the very first stitch and into the very last stitch like so. We made it to the very last stitch. So into this stitch, you're going to place two half double crochets into that very last stitch. And you're gonna keep repeating this until it is the same amount of rows as you did for the other triangular portion. Once you're done, you can chain one, cut and pull the yarn through to secure and that'll finish the bust panel. The length of that edge should be the same as the length of the bust panel before we start doing the decreases on both sides. So for me, that was six inches. Now we're gonna start on the back panel. So we're gonna begin with a slip knot. And once again, we're doing half double crochet foundation stitches. I'm just gonna show it to you one more time. So you're going to chain up three. And then you're going to put your hook into the very first chain, making sure to grab both the front and the back loop. You're going to pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the top loop, which is the foundation stitch, and then yarn over and pull through three loops on your hook for the half double crochet. And you're going to keep making half double crochet foundation stitches to the length that we determined in the beginning when we were doing our measurements. So for me, that was 12 inches. You're gonna keep going until you reach that measurement and the back panel is pretty simple. It's just a rectangle. So we're going to start the next row by doing a chain up of two and then placing a half double crochet into every single stitch, including that very first stitch. And once again, we're not placing a half double crochet into the chain at the end. So you're just gonna keep working until you reach the height that we determined in the beginning. So the length of the bust panel before you start doing the decreases. So if you remember back to my diagram, that was six inches in length. So this is a six inch tall by 12 inch wide panel for the back panel. Now we have all of our pieces. So I have two bust panel pieces and this rectangular piece for the back. As you can see, everything lines up perfectly. And now I'm taking that bottom edge right there and I'm lining it up with the top of the back panel. So we're now going to attach these two panels together. So you're attaching the strap, the very edge to the back panel. So you can pick up where you left off, put your hook into the corner stitch and do a slip stitch. So you're gonna grab the yarn and pull it through both panels. You're going to chain up one and now you're just gonna go into every single stitch and do a single crochet. So as you can see here, I have my hook and the front and the back loop of both stitches, corresponding stitches on the back panel and the strap panel. I'm doing a single crochet. So you put the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook for a single crochet. And when you attach these two panels together, the ending should be at the midpoint of the back panel. Cause remember the back panel is 12 inches long and this edge is six inches long. 
When you're ready, you can chain one, cut, and pull the yarn through. You want to repeat this for the other side as well, making sure that when you attach the other side that the seam is on the same side. So the seam should be facing outward. And because my back is a V shape, they should meet at the middle to create that V shape. Now we're ready to join the sides together. You want to make sure that the seam is facing outward. And we're going to line up the two edges like so and begin with a slip knot. You're going to place your hook into that last row before we started the decreases. So for me, that was right there. And you're going to find the corresponding stitch on the other panel. You're going to place the slip knot on your hook and pull it through both panels. And then you're going to do a chain up of one. And once again, we're going into both panels and we're going to do a single crochet. This side doesn't have any clear stitches to go into, so you just want to make sure that it's even and that the sides meet up perfectly. When you reach the end, you're going to do a chain up of one, cut the yarn and pull it through, and then repeat for the other side. You just want to make sure that before you do the other side that all the seams are facing outward. And you also want to make sure that you line up the edges so that it matches up. When you're done, this is what it should look like. It should be one continuous piece with all the seams on the inside or the same side. Now we're ready to make the body of the top. So you're going to go into the corner. You want to make sure that the seams are facing down. And we're going to pull a slip knot through the corner stitch. Chain one. And we're going into every single stitch, including the very first stitch, and doing a single crochet. So you're going to put your hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook all the way down to the other side. You're going to go into every single stitch including these little gaps at the seams here. And at the end you want to count the stitches and make sure you have an even number for when we do our mesh row at the end. If you find that you have an odd number you can just throw in an extra stitch into that very last stitch. For the next row we're doing a row of double crochet into every single stitch including the very first stitch. So to do double crochet, you're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, and that will be a double crochet. And you go and do a double crochet into every single stitch. Now you're just going to keep doing these double crochet, no increase or decrease rows. Remember we're placing a double crochet even into this very first stitch. And you're going to do this until it is your desired length. So I kept going until it hit about waist length for me. If you want to make it longer, you can do so as well, or you can make it shorter. Just don't forget that we're doing two mesh rows at the end, so you want to count that into the length of the top, the overall length. We're now ready to begin the final two mesh rows. So we're going to start off with a chain up of four, and we're going to turn our work. We're going to be skipping the very first two stitches and going and doing a double crochet into the third stitch. So yarn over, place your hook into the third stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two more. And we'll create this little mesh hole. Now we're going to chain up one. We're going to skip a stitch and into the second stitch, double crochet. Once again, chain one, skip a stitch, into the next stitch, a double crochet. And this is going to be the pattern that you're going to repeat all the way down to the very end. Here's what it should look like. We now have reached the end. I'm going to show you how to do the second row for the mesh. So once again, we're doing a chain up of four and we're turning our work. We're going to place a double crochet into the top of that double crochet space. Chain one, skip, that space and then place a double crochet into that double crochet space. Once again, chain one, we're skipping that space and into the top of that double crochet, placing a double crochet. At the very, very end, you're going to place a double crochet into the second chain of that chain of four. And that will be the final row. Now we're going to chain up one and we're going to clean up the edges of this top. So we're going to add a single crochet row along the entire perimeter of this top. So into the very edge here, I'm going to place two single crochets. So here's my first single crochet and my second single crochet. And now I'm placing just one single crochet along the entire perimeter. 
It doesn't really matter where you put the single crochet as long as they're fairly evenly spaced out and this will clean up the edges nicely. You want to do this all the way around your top along the entire perimeter and when you reach the other corner, we're going to place two single crochets into the corner just to give it a nice crisp edge. Right there, we're placing two single crochets in that corner. We are now ready to start the sleeve. We're going to be making double crochet foundation stitches. So like the half double crochet foundation stitches, we're going to start off with a chain up of three. We're going to yarn over and put our hook into the very first chain, grabbing the front and the back loop, and pull up a loop. We're going to yarn over, pull through the top loop, which is the foundation, and then do a double crochet. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. Here it is one more time. We're pulling up a loop, yarning over, pulling through the top loop, which is the foundation stitch, and then doing a double crochet. Now you're going to keep doing this until the length is long enough that it wraps around your wrist and you also want to make sure that you have an even number of stitches because we're going to be starting off with mesh stitches for the cuff portion of our sleeve so this is the length that i wanted i want to be pretty tight around my wrist so i just made sure it was just long enough to cover my wrist you can also make it longer if you'd like we're going to chain up four and turn our work to prepare for the mesh stitch we're placing a double crochet into the third stitch Now we're going to chain one, skip a stitch, into the next stitch a double crochet. So just like we did earlier, we're going to be doing this pattern of chain one, skip one, double crochet all the way down. Now for my cuff, I wanted five rows of mesh. You can alter this any way you'd like. You don't have to put mesh if you don't want to. This is completely up to your preference. Let's start the next row of mesh. So we're chaining up four. And we're skipping that space and adding a double crochet into the top of that double crochet stitch that we did earlier. And then we're doing a chain up of one, skipping a space, and double crocheting into the top of that double crochet stitch. And we're just going to keep doing this all the way down. At the end of the row, we're placing one last double crochet into the second chain of that chain up before we did earlier when we were turning our work. So into that second chain, a double crochet. Then we're just going to keep doing this. I did this for three more rows for a total of five mesh rows for the cuff of my sleeve. When you're done, you can chain up two and turn your work. And we're placing a double crochet into every single stitch. You're going to place a double crochet into the space, a double crochet into the top of that double crochet stitch, a double crochet into the space. So I didn't put my hook into the chain, I just put my hook straight into the space. For the last stitch, you're going to place a double crochet into the second chain of the chain 4. Okay guys, I cannot find the footage for this next portion, so I'm just going to walk you through it. Basically, once you finish this row of double crochet, you're going to chain 2, turn your work, and do a row of double crochet into every single stitch, including the very first stitch. You're going to do a total of 5 rows of double crochet, just regular double crochet rows. And on the sixth row, we're going to be increasing at the beginning of the row. So I continued this pattern of five regular rows on the sixth row and increase because we want to accommodate for the increase in width in our arms. Now, if you find that this isn't increasing fast enough, you can alter the pattern so you can do, let's say, three or four regular rows and on the fifth or fourth row, an increase. But for me, I did five rows of regular double crochet six row increase i just finished my fifth row now we're going to begin the sixth row with an increase so you're going to chain two turn your work into the very first stitch a double crochet and then back into that same stitch we're placing one more double crochet for an increase then you're going to double crochet to the end of the row and then repeat the pattern. So do five rows of regular double crochet, and then on the sixth row, we're going to increase. However, instead of increasing at the beginning of the row, we're going to increase at the end. So here is my sixth row. I'm going to be increasing into the last stitch. So I'm placing one double crochet into that last stitch, and back into that same stitch, one more double crochet for an increase. 
Now you're going to keep doing this pattern of five regular rows and increasing in the first or last stitch on the sixth row until the end is long enough that it can wrap around your arm by your armpit. So here's a diagram. You want it to be able to wrap around this portion of your arm. Once you're able to wrap around this portion, then we're going to start working on increasing more rapidly so that we can wrap this around and attach it to the bust panel. So it has to be long enough that it can go over your shoulder and under your armpit. So the pattern I started was three regular rows and on the fourth row, increasing into the first stitch and increasing into the last stitch. So before we were alternating, increasing in the beginning or the end of the row, now we're going to be increasing on both sides so that it can increase more rapidly. Once again, everyone's body is different, everyone's measurements are different, so if you find that it's not increasing quickly enough or if it's increasing too quickly, you can alter the pattern of how many regular rows and how many rows of increasing. So to increase at the beginning and the end of the row, you're going to start with a chain two and you're going to place two double crochets into the very first stitch and then double crochet down to the end and two double crochets into the very last stitch. Once again, I did four rows, so three regular rows and on the fourth row, I increased into the first stitch and increased into the last stitch until it was long enough that I could wrap around the very top of my arm over my shoulder and under my armpit. So the top of my sleeve is now long enough that it can be attached to the bust panel. Before we attach the sleeve, we wanna do a little bit of prep work. So you wanna make sure that the seams are facing up towards you. And I like to stretch out the sleeve hole a little bit like so and take a stitch marker and mark the center of the top of the sleeve that we just did. So this is the top of the sleeve. I fold it in half and place a stitch marker at the midpoint. This will make it easier for attaching the sleeve like so. Here I'm just double checking to make sure that the length is correct and I'm lining up the side of the sleeve with the side of the sleeve armhole. And to make things a little bit easier, I'm taking the stitch marker that's marking the midpoint of the sleeve. I'm going to attach it to the midpoint of the armhole opening, just so that things don't move around too much while I'm stitching these two panels together and it keeps everything nice and even. Here I'm lining it up and you can start working with where you left off on the sleeve so you're going to line up the ends together the end of the sleeve where you just left off and the base of the sleeve hole opening so you can put your hook right back where you left off and what you're going to do is you're going to find that corner stitch at the base of the front panel or the front of the sleeve opening and you're going to do a slip stitch so you're going to grab the yarn and pull it through both panels now the two panels are connected with a slip stitch. To begin stitching these two pieces together, you're going to start with a chain up of one and you're going to turn everything carefully. Once you turn your work, you just want to double check and make sure that you're working into one panel of the front and the first panel of the sleeve and you're not stitching let's say the front and the back sleeve together by accident. And trust me, it's happened to me before. So now you're gonna place your hook into the front panel and then the corresponding stitch into that sleeve panel and join them with a single crochet. And we're gonna work all the way to the midpoint that we marked off earlier. We reached our midpoint. I'm going to carefully remove the stitch marker. And before I begin stitching anything together, just line up the ends where we're going to be ending the joining of the sleeve and the front panel and put a stitch marker and just line everything up nicely so that I'm making sure that the stitches are even. Now we're going to just keep going and continue attaching these two panels together by placing our hook into both the front panel and the sleeve panel and joining together with a single crochet. We're going to keep working all the way down until the very base where we marked it off with the stitch marker. And once we reach the base, we're going to start working up towards the sleeve as you can see here. 
once again before we start stitching anything together we want to make sure that everything's lined up nicely and you can use stitch markers to make sure that nothing is moving around and you're going to place your hook into both sides of the sleeve and stitch them together with a single crochet until you reach the very end once you reach the end you can chain one cut and pull the yarn through we are now going to repeat all of these steps for the other sleeve as well. So first you want to make sure that the seams are facing up. You want to fold the sleeve in half and make sure that everything lines up nicely. And then you're going to place your hook into that base of the sleeve hole opening right there. So I'm just placing my hook into the base and I'm going to join the two panels together with a slip stitch like so. Then from here you can use a stitch marker to mark off that midpoint on both the sleeve and the front panel. And I also like to use a stitch marker to mark off the end where we're going to be ending. And placing the stitch marker through the sleeve and again to the front panel like so. And we're going to join that first side with single crochet all the way down. So hook through the front panel and through the sleeve and joining with a single crochet and you're going to go all the way down one side once you reach the midpoint remove the stitch marker and keep going down to the other side where you'll be ending at that red stitch marker once you finish you're going to keep going up and attach the sleeves together now to close the sleeve and you can use stitch markers to help keep everything nice and neat. And you're going to go all the way down and at the end chain one, cut and pull the yarn through. This step is optional but I like to add a cord that runs along the back of the top just so that the sleeves don't fall off of my shoulders. I counted up the stitches on either side so that the two stitch markers are even and the cord will run evenly along both sides. Now I'm going to take one of the stitch markers out and put my hook in and I already made a slip knot but you're going to make a slip knot and basically pull the slip knot through that stitch. To make this cord it's very simple you're just going to make a chain that's going to be long enough to reach the other side. You don't want it to be too short otherwise it's going to pull the top too tightly across your back and you don't want to make it too long otherwise it's going to be too slouchy so you want to have the right amount of tension that will keep the sleeves from slouching off of your shoulders so i just kept measuring like so and once i felt that the chain was long enough i took off the other stitch marker placed my hook in and i'm ready to attach the cord to the other side so you're going to attach with a slip stitch, you're pulling the yarn all the way through to the other side. And then to make this more secure, I went into the next stitch right under and secured it with another slip stitch. Once you have that attached, you can go ahead and do a chain up of one, cut the yarn and pull it through to secure. We are now ready to start the peacoat detail at the front of the top. So as you can see all of my seams are facing inside and I'm going to grab two stitch markers. You're going to start at the bottom of the top and count the stitches by multiples of four until you reach the point where you want the peacoat to start and you're going to mark both sides. Now you're going to grab a smaller hook. This is a 2.25 millimeter hook. I'm working from the top down. So I'm making a slip knot and we have the first stitch marker here, so top down. And I'm placing my hook in the stitch above that stitch marker. So not in the stitch marker, but the stitch above. And I'm pulling the slip knot through that stitch. Then I'm going to do a chain up of one and turn my work. You can now remove the stitch marker and into that stitch we're going to be placing a single crochet. And now we're ready to start our first peacoat. So you're going to start off with a chain up of three and you're going to place your hook back into that base of that single crochet into those two front loops right there. So I'm putting my hook into the two front loops and I'm doing a slip stitch. So you're pulling the yarn through those two loops and through the loop on your hook. And that creates that little peacoat or dot detail. 
Now you can chain up one and into the next four stitches you're going to do a single crochet and you want to make sure that you don't do these stitches too tightly. Remember you're using a smaller hook so you don't want the top to bunch up oddly so you want to keep them fairly loose. Once we complete the four single crochet we're ready for the next peacoat. So you're going to chain three and place your hook at the base of the single crochet through those two front loops and do a slip stitch. So through the front loops and the loop on your hook. Then you're going to chain one and continue the pattern. So four single crochet into the fourth single crochet we're adding a peacoat. And you're going to keep doing this until you reach the bottom of the top. Once you reach the bottom, you're going to do the same thing on the other side as well. Once we're all done, we're going to grab our darning needle and weave in all of these loose ends. To close the top off, there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could use a pin or buttons, you can use ribbons, you can create two ties off the sides of the top, or you can do what I did. I basically made a very long strap just by making chains, and I wove in one side of the strap to one side of the top, and using the little peacoat details as a marker for where to put the next side in, I just pushed the end of the strap through the top like so and of course you want to do this while the top is on but this is just for demonstration purposes and I just tied it off like this and made a little bow. I like doing it this way because I can kind of control how much cleavage I want to show depending on how I feel that day so I can tie it up higher, I can tie it up lower but again it's up to your preference so this is what it looks like once it's in and tied together. And this is the final product. So we have two mesh rows at the bottom, we have the little peacoat details, we have the strap in the back, and the sleeves. And guys, we are finally done with this top. This top is just so flattering, the v-neck design with the little peacoat details. The yarn I use is very lightweight and silky, so although it is summertime, I still wore this on evenings when it was cooler. The tutorial for the shorts will be coming out next, so please stay tuned for that. I also just want to say a quick thank you to all of the people that have subscribed to my channel. We finally reached a thousand subscribers, and I'm just so excited to share this crochet journey with all of you and to share all of my projects with everyone. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone!